San Fernando was once part of a settlement of indigenous Indians and later a Capuchin mission. Its original site was part of a 1786 land grant under which Governor Chacon granted a portion of land to Isador Vialva on the condition that a section of it would be set aside for a town. However, Vialva broke the agreement and sold his grant to Jean Baptiste Jallet, who, after some time, sold out the land by dividing it into plots which stretched from High Street to St. James Street. And even the land that was reserved for the town in the original agreement was sold by him. So it seems that Trinidad has always had a succession of smart men, real tricky daddyans. Incidentally, Jean-Baptiste Jalé had established the first sugar estate in the Naparimas called Mont Mon Chagrin or My Pain. And so Mont Chagrin Street gets its name from that estate. The city was originally named or not originally, the city was named for Fernando, who was the son of the Spanish King Charles. The city was destroyed by fire in 1818 and then rebuilt, and it reached its present boundary around 1846. It became a borough in 1853 and a city in 1998. Oh no, that's wrong actually folks. It became a city in 1988. Did you know that San Fernando is the most populated city in Trinidad? Meaning that more people live in the boundaries of the city of San Fernando than in the city of Port of Spain? Today, we are going to look at some of the historic buildings in San Fernando. According to Angelo B. Sessa Singh, the, the St. Andrew's Lodge on Root Street was founded in 1830 and had many prominent Trinidadians in its membership. Among them included San Fernando's first mayor, Louis Romain, who is buried in a private cemetery behind the building that we are looking at right now. The San Fernando Town Hall is on Harris Promenade at the corner of Penitent Street. In 1853, construction was started and completed in four months at a cost of $3,000. The original building was a wooden structure and in 1930 it was demolished and the present building erected on the same site. In the foyer of the City Hall is a brass bell. The bell was the only item recovered from the Lady McLeod steamer which sank off the coast of Vistabella in 1854. Also on Harris Promenade is the divisional headquarters for the Southern Division of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. There has been a police station at that location from as early as 1853. Construction of the present building started in 1869 and was completed in 1877 at a cost of £25,000. The building is constructed of local limestone and bears a resemblance to the former police headquarters located at the corner of St. Vincent and Sackville Streets in Port of Spain. Although this establishment is now called Happy Corner, for years it was called Black Cat Bar. In the beginning, this was an establishment you were comfortable carrying your wife. Maybe not so now. According to historian Angelo Bicessa Singh, Miss Elvira Glasson was a colored woman who had emigrated to San Fernando in the 1860s and in 1870 opened a restaurant and hotel called Royal Hotel. 
Elvira died in 1892 and the property changed ownership several times, becoming known as the Black Cat Bar in the 1920s until the 1960s when the name changed to Happy Corner Hotel and Bar. After the change from Royal Hotel, the business became, shall we say, less elegant. These old commercial buildings near King's Wharf in San Fernando have been standing since the 1850s. During that era, sugar was king and the wharf was the main depot for the exportation of sugar, rum and molasses. Estate owners would visit to purchase tools and hardware. One of, one of the businesses in this row was a general store of Alston & Company, which is now part of the Ansa Macal Group. Another business that was located there was the Colonial Bank, which was the predecessor of Republic Bank. Located on Carib Street, this is the site of the original and only San Fernando Power Station. In 1921, the mayor, Charles H. Gopal, mortgaged the town to the government to obtain funds to establish the San Fernando Municipal Electric Lighting Works. This site was the location of the waterworks and a steam generator was installed. By 1923, electric lines had been set up through parts of the town. With growth in demand, additional steam generators were installed in 1927, 1931 and 1935. This led to the need to expand the building. So in 1939, the building was remodeled given the exterior that we see today. In 1954, the San Fernando Municipal Electric Lighting Works was closed with the generators being sold to t and Tech. Sitting on the corner of Carib Street and Upper Hillside Street in San Fernando is what is believed to be the oldest surviving house in San Fernando. Built in 1832 by Samuel Edwards, a stonemason from Barbados, the house was the home of the Cadres family. Called the Carib House, it is believed that the name arises from the fact that it is located on Carib Street. This building has been described as one of the finest surviving examples of Art Deco design in Trinidad. It was designed in 1931 by John Goppy, and it is said that the facade incorporates the V8 logo, which was the flagship engine of the Ford Motor Line at the time. Located on Royal Road, the building is the Ansa Macal Center for South Trinidad. We return to Harris Promenade, this time to the Roman Catholic Church. The first church on this location was a wooden building built in 1832. In 1840, construction was started on a new wooden church and completed in 1849. The current church was completed in 1975 and the tower of the present church contains one of the largest clocks in Trinidad and Tobago. If you like the content, please share this video. On June 2nd, 1870, at the corner of Harris Promenade and Penitent Street, the foundation stone for a courthouse was laid. Due to stops and starts, the courthouse was not opened until 1874. Although there's a very modern court facility at the rear of the building, the front portion of this building has been retained as the original building. You can get more information on each of these buildings in the Other Places of Interest page on the trinoutdoors.com website.
This building was once the store of W.M. Tennant and Company that was a sugar empire from the 1840s to the 1950s. Tennant's store were among the first to import tractors, beginning with Holt Crawlers, which later became the Caterpillar brand. The store and the sugar estates were sold over time to Tate & Lyle, which later became Carney 1975 Limited. The store was closed in the 1950s and at some point became the office or location for the Central Marketing Agency. The Carnegie Library on Harris Promenade in San Fernando was established as a result of a donation of £2,500 by Mr. Andrew Carnegie, the Scottish-born American philanthropist. The donation was specifically for the creation of a library. Previously, the site had been the location of the San Fernando market. Mr. E. R. Gammon, the architect attached to the Public Works Department, designed the building and the construction was completed in 1918 and in 1919, the library opened its doors to the public. The building was constructed at a cost of 2,300 pounds. Notice, there was no cost overrun. In 1977, the building was declared unsafe and it took six years for the Ministry of Works to renovate the building with it finally being opened in 1984. Once again, the building is under renovation, being closed in 2015, and in 2023, the renovations have not yet been completed. Opened in July 1915, at the corner of Mukarapo Street, Coffee Street, High Street, and Harris Promenade, Palace Cinema was San Fernando's first cinema. It was built by J. McDougall, and had three shows per week, Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. According to Lynn Macedo in her work, Impact of Indian Film in Trinidad, the first Indian film to be shown in Trinidad was Prem Sanyas, which was shown here in January 1930 at the Palace Cinema. Today, the building is a retail establishment. In 1860, William Caspar Keelard, who was born in Colombo, Sri Lanka, constructed a house on Pointe Pier Road. Dr. Keelard's house was one of the most magnificent in San Fernando at the time. The ground floor comprised kitchens, servants' quarters, and other accommodations. The first floor boasted a wide gallery, which also doubled as a waiting room for patients. The upper floor was mainly bedrooms for Dr. Keelard and his family. The structure boasted ornate wrought iron balustrades on the top floor and the, and the staircase, all of which exist to this day. Dr. Keelard died on October 13, 1875 of yellow fever. Upon the death of his daughters, the house was owned by a succession of owners until it was purchased by the Brahma Kutri Raj Yoga Center in 1987. You can get more information on each of these buildings in the Other Places of Interest page on the TrinOutdoors.com website. If you want to see other videos of outdoor activities in Trinidad, select one of the videos that is appearing on your screen now.